Welcome to the Mind Body Business Show. The three keys to your success is just moments away. Here's your host, Brian Kelly. Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the Mind Body Business Show. I am so, so excited because we have an amazing expert in the field of mindset with us tonight. Oh my goodness, I'm getting goosebumps on my arms. I'm not kidding. I love what I get to do. Real quick, the Mind Body Business Show. What is that all about? If you've never seen the show, real quickly, uh, in my now 55 years on this planet, uh, I began studying those who are successful, specifically those who are successful, and started noticing certain patterns develop and why they had achieved that level of success that they were they were getting. And I realized that, they, and they kept prop, uh, coming up over and over and over. And so I said, my goodness, so there's actually three areas. One is mind, which means mindset. Uh, successful people have figured out how to develop a rock solid, very uh, empowering mindset. And we're gonna go deeper into that tonight on the show. So I'm gonna move past mindset, even though uh, it is probably the most important aspect of your success, whether it be business or personal. Uh, and then there's body. That is literally about taking care of your body. Those who are successful tend to do this. Uh, they exercise regularly. Doesn't mean every single day, but regularly. And they are very um, cognizant of what they're intaking as far as nutrition, whether it's food or drink. And uh, that's another pattern I found that developed in many uh, successful people. And then business, oh my goodness, that is so multifaceted. There are, there's sales, there's marketing, that's a big one, team building, scaling, systematizing, the list goes on and on and on. And those that are successful have mastered all three of these areas, mind, body, and business. And when it comes to mind and body, it's like they are like a team, mind and body. Your mind and body are a team. More specifically, more importantly, they are your team. So if both, if either one of the team members is not operating at a peak level of performance, then you can guess that the team as a whole might be suffering. And so it's very important first to set the foundation for your success, for your life, and that is through mindset and taking care of your body. And that's going to be a big part of the topic of tonight's show. I'm so excited. And another uh, thing I noticed with successful people beyond mind, body, business, in, in fact, this goes into the mind realm once again, is most successful people are very avid readers. They love to read. And with that, we're gonna quickly segue into a little segment I like to appropriately call Bookmarks. Here we go. Bookmarks, born to read. Bookmarks, ready, steady, read. Bookmarks, brought to you by reachyourpeaklibrary.com. And there you see on the screen, reachyourpeaklibrary.com. And one quick note for all of you watching, either live or listening later, the recording is stay with us. In other words, take notes, take out a pen and paper, literally, you know, the old school instrument and take notes and write down the resources that you hear during the show instead of going off and typing in a website address and checking it out. Because as they say, and as I say, the magic happens in the room. And it, I would really... I would really be disappointed if you were to miss one golden nugget by our guest expert, Rihanna Milne, who's coming on very soon. So stay with us, take notes, and you're going to love the value that this young lady is going to bring to the show. I kid you not. Oh, this is going to be phenomenal. ReachYourPeakLibrary.com. That is a website that I personally put together as a result of finally getting in the habit of reading books. I didn't start reading books um, voraciously until just several years ago. And then I became a sponge. I finally learned that this was one of the key elements for becoming successful. And so this website I put together, these every book you see in this website, I have read and more importantly, vetted, meaning not every book has made it to this list that I've ever read. And so that is here to help you, the entrepreneur, the business person that's looking to increase your success, increase your, your personal, um, prowess in, in all areas. And so this is really my gift to you. It's not a money-making website. It is there for you to go and you can pick out books that have at least been vetted by one other successful person. 
So that way, the odds of you wasting time on a book are greatly decreased. And so that's there for you and um, enjoy it. Write it down, don't go there yet, because it is now time already, fantastically, to bring on our wonderful special guest expert. Here we go. It's time for the guest expert spotlight. Savvy, skillful, professional, adept, trained, big league, qualified. And there she is, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, how are you, Brian? <laughs> the only Rihanna. How are you doing, oh, Rihanna? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me tonight. Oh, really happy to be here. I'm so excited. I cannot tell you because uh, you are an expert in the field that I love so much. And it's just we're going to have a rocking good time. Is that OK if we have a good time on this that show? That would be great. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> hey, before I jump in and, and formally introduce you, I want to remind everyone that's watching live that if you stay on to the end, you get a chance to win a five night stay at a five star luxury resort in Mexico, all provided to us by our sponsors, as you can see up in the corner, powertexting.com. And we give away a vacation every single week on this show. And just so you know, these vacation stays are not something to snare you in to a timeshare presentation, which many have in the past. Uh, I know that for a fact because the actual sponsor, the owner of the company, powertexting.com, has actually used this very vacation um, giveaway himself no less than three times. And so each and every time he said it was a phenomenal experience. So be sure to stick on to the end. Now, it is time to introduce the one and only Rihanna Milne. She is a certified global life dating and relationship coach, a number one best-selling author, the host of her podcast called Lessons in Life and Love. She is an educational speaker, a certified trauma and addictions professional and is a licensed mental health counselor for close to 20 years in Palm Beach County, Florida. Amazing already. She was also a life and dating coach for the docu-series Radical Dating, Finding Lasting Love Over 40. And get this, her client is now happily married. So do you think she knows what she's doing? <laughs> the answer is yes. Rihanna specializes in those who have had past childhood dating or relationship trauma and offers one-on-one -on -one VIP coaching and online virtual coaching programs for both singles and couples at her life and love training academy.com. I love it. With that now, finally, <laughs> finally introduce the wonderful Rihanna Milne. Um, Thank you so much. That's really sweet. Thank you, Brian. Yes. I'm so excited to have you here, Rihanna. I cannot tell you how much I, I think you can tell a little bit. <laughs> about to jump out of my chair. I'm so excited. Um, one thing I love about uh, introducing guests is the bios are amazing. Yours is no exception. My goodness, you are so like um, accomplished. And Thank you you. Have, you're very welcome. And you have the talent that helps people. And that's what's near and dear to my heart. That's something I know you love to do. Yeah. Uh, you're a very serving individual who loves to help people. I don't think you'd be in the field you're in if you didn't. I mean, come on. Um, no, it's definite. It's It has to be a passion. Yes, Absolutely. for sure. And it shows uh, all over. Look at just watching your face right now as we talk about it. You're glowing, you're, you're smiling, <laughs> you're excited. And one of the things I love to do is, is once I, we learn more about you and your accolades, your accomplishments, your past experience, is I always love, I'm very curious. I'm a very curious person. I love to dig deeper into a successful person's mind. And yes, that's, we're talking about yours right now. Okay. And, to do that, and we're not talking about anything crazy, it's just getting a little deeper and find out what makes people like you, successful people like you, Rihanna, what makes you tick? And so like in the morning when we get up, you know, if you're anything like me, we're a little groggy, right? <laughs> and you gotta kind of raise up out of bed, swing the feet over the bed, they hit the floor, and now you start coming to, what I like to say, and uh, we start coming into, you know, realizing the days ahead. And we're either motivated or we're not. People like you are motivated. There's no doubt. You cannot right. not be motivated to do what you <laughs> successful at it. So for you, when you start to come to, so to speak, and you notice the day is coming and you know it's there and you get to now go help more people, what is it for you, Rihanna, that motivates you? What's going on in that beautiful brain of yours at that okay. moment? Okay. Well, I wake up a little bit differently. I usually wake up 
alone without the alarm about 10 to 15 minutes before the alarm goes off at 730. So I stretch for about 10 minutes in bed while your muscles are warm. It's the best time to stretch. And as I'm doing that, I think of the three goals for the day that I want to make sure I get done and in what order of importance must they be done. And then if I have more time, I'll do goal four and goal five. But that's been a routine of mine since my 20s, always thinking, what do I, it is I have to do today? So I don't have that sleepy feeling when I get up. By the time I do get out of bed, I know where I'm going. I'm focused on what I want to do. Um, and then I, once I am dressed, I, I get a protein shake, and then I sit down and meditate for 15 minutes, um, which is a very important part of focusing my brain as well as giving gratitude for the things I do have and getting into my, my spiritual presence, which is a really important part of my business success. So what motivates me, basically, um, things that I have gone through in my life. You know, I've always wanted to be a counselor since I was very young. I used to do a lot of motivational writing when I was in high school. I used to write these little mini journals and people say, can I read what you're writing? And they used to say, this is good. This is motivational. And I've gone through a couple of painful relationships. Um, and after the second one, I decided to really focus my niche on the correlation that I made between uh, toxic partners, for lack of a better word, and the fact that they had childhood trauma. And I had to figure that out for myself. So it was part of my forgiveness and my healing um, with that partner. And I had great love for him. And it was a devastating situation at the time for me and my daughters, my family. And um, I needed the understanding. And me being a psychotherapist, I had seven psychotherapist friends. I'm like, what did he have? What, what made him do these things he did? And everyone was baffled because even though I have a triple master's in applied clinical and counseling psychology, this was information we did not learn in school. So I was so fascinated with the research. I just was so excited to bring this out to the world globally and do the correlation between childhood traumas and how that blocks people in life, love, business, and even parenting. I love that's what motivates me. <laughs> yeah, I love every bit of that. And uh, so much does happen in our formative years, especially between zero and seven. These are, I'm going back to NLP training that I've been through and that yes. can actually plot a course to your, your actual results. And I love that you are going in and identifying those and helping people to overcome uh, what has been holding them back from the life they, they truly deserve, that they want and that, that they deserve. And that's, that's beautiful what you do. And I wanted to point out for those of you that are watching and taking notes, hint, hint, wink, wink, that uh, yet another pattern uh, that Rihanna just brought up that I hear over and over and over again. And it's usually from as, as a result of that very first question. And that is that they have a routine. Mm -hmm. And you notice Rihanna said she's done this. She's had a routine since her 20s. And so it's not something she just started doing and then oh, I'll do it now and then here and there. Uh, it's a routine. She's disciplined. And that's one other trait of su highly successful people. And notice she spends time on her mind and her body. She meditates. She goes over three goals and she has a protein shake as well. So there you have it. You have mind and body already starting the day. That's why Rihanna is where she is. She's successful. She's in Florida. She's helping people um, and she's rocking it. And I'm so fortunate to be on the other side interviewing you right now, Rihanna. Thank I just, you, Brian. I think another part of it too is when someone can take their pain and make it their passion and their purpose. It's really important to have purpose in your work. Me being very spiritual, I, I feel that we are all human beings here in this world, world for a reason. So it's important you find your reason and how can you give back, whether it's to humans, to the earth, to animals, just making a difference in some way. And that to me is, you know, helping people heal from the things that I went through with both childhood and love trauma. You know, it gives me purpose. That's, that's why I love what I do so much. And, you know, because of the fields you're in and what you're dealing with trauma, I mean, I can imagine that that's got to be somewhat of a challenge at times, probably not for you having done it for so long, but, you know, that's not a positive thing that people went through that they're going to bring back up. How do you re how yeah. do you maintain because to become and, and remain a, a successful person, it really takes a rock solid positive mindset. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, I work hard and I play hard. <laughs> um, I don't take, once I'm done my work, I can close it off and really go into something different. You know, I really love world travel. I do that a lot. I love dancing. I love music. I was out dancing last night to a Motown band. <laughs> I mean, my friends are a really great company and I can just drop work when I drop it. But when I'm with my client, I'm super focused and I am already prepared that most clients come to me very high anxiety bouts of depression, feeling very frustrated in love. They keep having repetitive toxic relationships um, or they may be struggling at work. They stay with work because they're afraid of change and they hate their job. So there's a lot of negatives and fear and low trust in the clients when they come to me. But I'm so used to it that it doesn't really shake me, but it just takes me a couple ses sessions to get them to just relax mm -hmm. and open their mind and their hearts to learning something new. And then I look at uh, vitamin therapy. I put them on vitamin therapy. My clients are not on psychotropic drugs. <laughs> so we do everything holistic, mind, body, spirit to heal. And then we make the unconscious to conscious awareness. So no longer are they acting from a fear-based unconscious mindset. Instead, you know, when they learn the tools, they're working from full conscious awareness to make their decisions, their goals, and go for their dreams with more confidence. Yeah, my goodness. And that's it. The fear-based mindset is yeah. really what holds people back from greatness. Uh, and interesting, uh, because we have similar paths in that, in that area, Rihanna, which I love about this is, you know, once I learned my myself personally, that it was really fear that was holding me back from really achieving what I would deem success and then learn the tools and techniques to release that fear. Wow. What a difference. My goodness. Isn't I'm it? It's phenomenal Ooh. when you're, I, I call it the other side of the rainbow. You're starting <laughs> out not knowing what you don't know. And it's a very frustrating, scary, sad place to be. And then once you start getting these skills, you're going to do better and feel better, but then you'll slip because the unconscious is so strong. And those behavioral patterns from your childhood, those coping mechanisms come out later as emotional triggers um, or poor behavioral patterns. And we need to break all those, not only the thinking patterns, but the doing um, or the reaction or the blaming or the feeling like a victim. There's all these different things that are part of that negative past we've got to break those habitual habits to get you clear and clean. And it's so funny you said that I have an aura because we talk about that all the time when my clients are on the other side of the rainbow, that you can just see their aura, their energy, their, their peace, their calm, their happiness levels are very, very evident. Um, it's almost like a, an anti-aging drug as well. You know, uh, people feel and look much younger than their, their years just because they just feel so good and happy about life. And it's all because of the mind and yes. how powerful our minds are. We have no idea. You have a better idea than most, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the beautiful, how wonderful that you get to witness that, you know, as on a daily basis. And I can see what would motivate you for sure, knowing that at the end of the other side of the rainbow, they're going to have that glow. They're going to have that youthful, uh, freed, liberated mind that's allowing them to be who they truly were meant to be. Yes. So what you do for people is a godsend. So God bless you for Thank doing you. it. Thank you. Thank uh, you. It's really, and I truly, truly mean that. That is phenomenal. And for those of you watching, we're going to get a little deeper into what Rihanna does and learn how she can help you if you're a potential candidate then we definitely want to get you connected with Rihanna. This show is not about selling things. It's not about pitching things. It is about providing value and providing solutions for those who are ready for it. And if that person is you, then we will give you the opportunity to reach out and connect with Rihanna. Highly recommend you do. Um, just from the short time I've known her, I already can <laughs> tell she is a mover and a shaker and she helps people in phenomenal ways. It's it's hard to explain to those who have not gone through any kind of mindset work, Rihanna. Um, you know, it's like, I don't know how to tell you. You just have to experience it is what I would always say. Well, the, the thing is, most people don't think they have childhood trauma. And I, when I first was reading this, it's like, oh, he had them. I didn't. You know, I had a few bumps in the road, but I, I didn't have trauma. 
And then the research was saying 90% of people, adults, have one to three of the 10 traumas I'm going to describe. And I developed my list based on the years of psychotherapy. And every job I had was working with kids from traumatic backgrounds. So I was in a hospital setting working with kids who were suicidal, cutting, runaways, drug and alcohol users from the foster care system. Then as a drug and alcohol counselor, I was in a drug rehab center for adolescents and with one from women with the, uh, with the prison system, which we call drug court. They were released from prison, allowed to go to a rehab. And then I worked in the schools as a specialty counselor called a SAC, S-A-C, student assistance counselor, working with the troubled, upset kids. So kids might have been ADHD or oppositional defiant, the bullies or the bullied kids, the loners, um, just somewhat traumatically upset. And they came from homes that were upsetting for them. So all that in combination. And then what I saw in my partners, I just kind of put this list together. Now there are more than 10 that I identify, but I talk about the top 10 when I'm interviewed and then people hear it and it's like, wow, that makes sense. Okay. Yes, I did have this happen. And as doing the research, I did identify mine as well. So then it started making sense where I was attracting troubled partners into my life. Wow. So, um, yeah. Would you like me to go into those 10? Yes, police. Okay. All righty. So when I do, if you'd like to write this down on a piece of paper, there's three columns. You put me on the first one. The second column would be partner, a partner you remember struggling with. And the third one would be parents. And you could put mom, dad, or both when I go through the list. Because um, later the Kaiser Permanente group with CDC, Center for Disease Control, also did a childhood trauma study, but their correlation was working with those with childhood trauma and how uh, later disease came out in their life, much earlier in life as well. So we're talking like MS, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, diabetes, um, so many different cancer heart attacks, heart disease. So all those have a correlation to early disease and illness onset, but they didn't really do life, love and business. And that was the end that I really researched. So our lists were different initially. And I were based mine on the, on the people that I've worked with. So I'll go through this list. Now, when you're young, you know, I don't want you to place now today blame on mom or dad because parents do that the best that they know how. And remember, they have probably come from trauma themselves. And then we don't want you to feel shamed either because you were young and innocent and you can't help the home environment that you were having to live in, you know, that you were a part of. So we're just trying to look this at this as a factual way, in a factual way. Okay, so first, the if you were... Um, a child that grew up with any addictions in the household. Now, Kaiser studies said just drugs and alcohol. So me being an addictions counselor, I say drugs, alcohol, sex, which is a chronic cheater of a parent, porn, gambling, hoarding, eating, spending, workaholism, gaming, TV watching. There's 11 addictions there and there's more, but those are some common ones. Um, number two is verbal abuse. So if you witness mom and dad yelling and screaming each other, but I also define if you never heard the words, I love you, or you didn't get compliments, um, if you didn't hear words of endearment, like, I love you, honey, I'm proud of you, those types of things. A lot of kids grew up not hearing that. Um, and instead, you might have heard something, you'll amount to no good. Uh, yeah, that's good, but it's still not good enough. You always heard these messages, it's not good enough. That's trauma number two, verbally. Okay. Number three is emotional abuse and neglect. Number four is physical abuse, like beatings, any kind of beatings, rape or molestation. And those two could have happened inside or outside of the home. The next trauma is abandonment. And I identify two types of abandonment. The first one I call no fault. So it's no fault of your parents if they happen to die early or if they have to go off and serve at war. A child is always left wondering, is my mom or dad okay? Will they be making it home? It's a very scary feeling for a child. And the third one would be if your parent happened to travel a lot to support the family. And I identified myself in that one because my dad, we didn't know it, the family, but he was like James Bond. He was FBI and CIA. 
And we did not know it until we got letters from Ronald Reagan and William Casey thanking him for his many years of service. But I do remember as a child asking my mom, when's dad coming home? And she would be all disgusted. Well, I don't know where he is. And I'm thinking, why? why well, where is he? Is he okay? You know, so that was a nerve wracking thing for a little child. Um, the fault abandonment would be if a parent never was active in your life or if there was a divorce and they happened to go off and not really see you on a regular basis, or they promised to see you and break their word, or even if they see you, they kind of check out and they're like only watching the football games, or it's a woman who's only involved with her new boyfriend and you're just sitting in the room on your computer. Okay. There's really not much interaction there. So that would be a fault abandonment. Um, the next one would be if you're part of adoption, foster care system, or had to go live in another household because your parents couldn't keep you in their household. Trauma number seven is one of the most popular. Um, that I call personal trauma. So that's if you remember being different in some way. You might have been a skinny and gawky kid or someone called, you know, they called you nerd, or you might have been overweight and you were teased for that. Uh, you might have had asthma and not chosen for the sports team or being labeled ADHD and felt different because of that. It could have been a racial thing where you felt different in school because you weren't like most of the other kids. So there's many different ways that trauma number seven could come out. And it's a very, very popular one, leaving you feeling not worthy or not good enough. It's trauma number eight, as I call a sibling trauma. Now, this one, your sibling could have bullied you. They could have been born with a medical issue, which commanded more of mom's and dad's time, or most commonly, you perceive them to be the golden child. They got more of mom's and dad's attention. So they might've been the super athlete or really pretty or really handsome or super smart. Whatever it was, they you could see mom and dad praise them all the time. You just didn't feel like you could measure up. The next one, number nine, has two parts. The first part is family trauma. This is if a parent was incarcerated, if you had to move a lot due to, if you're a military family, you were always the new kid in a different school every two to four years. If you came from lack and poverty um, or a dangerous neighborhood. And bringing in from the later list um, is one that's becoming unfortunately so profound and that I call community trauma. These are our school shootings, our community shootings, um, anything where big communities are lost and by things such as mother nature, floods, fires, hurricanes, mudslides, volcanoes. I mean, whole communities are being wiped out more and more often. We're seeing these types of things occur. Scary for the adults. Can you imagine little children going through this? And then the last one is, um, if there's a mental health illness in mom or dad. And the two most difficult to navigate is bipolar and borderline. So bipolar personality disorder, I describe as um, bipolar is manic depressive. So manic is uh, could be a gambling spree, a spending spree, an eating binge, okay? And depression can come out by you checking out or even through anger. And the other one, borderline personality disorder, I describe as quick tempers, um, moody. When they're good, they're great. But when they're bad, they're horrid. And you never know which one you're going to get. Mm -hmm. So that leaves a kid in a state of high anxiety. So those are the 10 that I saw over and over again with the populations that I worked with. And in the, the husband that was struggled. He actually had nine out of the 10 traumas. And then I look at the severity levels from one to 10. So let's say a child being beat, had three bad beatings in his childhood. They say, well, that was really bad. I'm going to give that a three. And then somebody who's beat three times a week, that's obviously a 10. So those severity levels make a big difference. And on the high scale, this is where you see your sociopaths and psychopaths. And a psychopath is a sociopath who kills. Um, sociopath is someone that um, uses people for pleasure or profit. Oh, my. So, yeah. Yeah, I was going down, as you're going down that list, you know, I'm trying to think and to, to have someone have that many. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's unfortunate. 
feel for them, right? <laughs> yes. Oh my yes. God. And when you understand that, that's why I said, yes, he had a really rough go of it when he was a child. And, you know, instead I felt compassion and the ability to forgive. But then at the same time, I had to say, okay, I have to be knowledgeable again to make sure I'm choosing someone who's emotionally healthy, right? And consciously aware and not taking high risks that not only ruin their reputation, their job, but because they're attached to me, it would ruin mine as well. Um, so that's a tough place to be when you're on the other side of that. Yeah. And it's amazing, you know, it just stirs up all these thoughts. Like when you meet people and they may be, uh, you know, they may not react to you in the way you want them to, but we don't know that they could have been on this list and had a lot of those going on that are still with them. Uh, that well, are amazingly enough, Brian, when, when people of trauma attract people of trauma and these relationships early on are like love bombing like a lot of texting, falling in love fast, want to be exclusive right away. This is the guy that might ask the girl to marry him within two or three months. And ladies, that's a real red flag. <laughs> you know, um, that's a scary thing. So uh, yeah, in the beginning, and then you see once it gets more commitment, so whether they move in together, they get engaged, they get married, or there's a child, then the, the mood disorders and, and the problems escalate after there's some other form of commitment. Yeah. That's usually about four months to nine months in. I think that's uh, that's almost true of any relationship where they're, <laughs> it started out healthy or not is after the kids come, oh boy, the, the whole, everything changes. And it, it some of it's good and some of it's like, oh man, this is difficult. How do we keep our, uh, our relationship going? Well, I gotta say the millennial men, I have a lot of respect for today. You know, I'm watching my son-in-laws be amazing fathers, Charles and Preston, shout out to you guys. Um, and they do change the diapers and take care of the kids and feed the kids. And in my generation, the men didn't do anything, <laughs> you know, the woman worked and then cooked and then cleaned and then took care of the kids. I mean, we were at super burnout. And I think that's why there was a lot of divorces in our baby boomer generation, you know, it's like, okay, the husband's just one more kid. So, um, <laughs> you know, but I'm seeing the millennial men really, really stepping up. And I believe this is why, you know, they saw their mothers with this struggle, you know, when the father was kind of the absent dad or he'd go to work, come home and sit on the couch and wait for dinner to be served. Um, so I really think the millennial men are really picking up and, and they're being better parents. They are being teams you know, helping with the, the child raising. And I, I see that in my family. So. That's fantastic to hear. Uh, really fantastic to hear because it seems from the outside looking in vantage point that the opposite is happening as far as family unity and strength uh, and binding uh, based on just what we see. You know, the problem is it's the media, it's the news, the general yeah. They don't really want to report on good things. It's just those that are shocking and horrible. Yeah, <laughs> and that's I know. Horrible. We could go down a, a rabbit hole on that. I don't want to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so very interesting and intriguing. And the fact that, I mean, think about this. For those of you watching and listening, this young lady to my left, to your right on the screen, knows how to help you to overcome and act in spite of these childhood um, horrible things that happen, these traumas. And some of them you may not even be aware of until you talk to Rihanna and she might, I, I've had this happen to me as well. That's why I bring that up. And like, oh my gosh, I completely forgot about that. Wow, ah. no wonder, you know, and these big realizations come up. And, and so, it might be interesting to tell them a couple examples of how this can come up. You know, we're talking about business. So the fear-based mindset of, I'm afraid to invest in myself. If I buy, you know, a business coach, will it work? Um, what if it doesn't work? And there's all this angst and anxiety and they don't believe in themselves enough. This usually comes from trauma number seven, the personal trauma or the verbal trauma, number two, when you've heard maybe from your parents, you'll amount to no good, or your opinion doesn't matter, or, you know, I'd rather see you than hear from you, just keep your mouth shut, you know, where your opinion is not respected. 
So it's really important that um, we analyze what is showing up for you. Now, just the opposite. Let's take an example of, you know, the beautiful story of Oprah Winfrey. She came from a lot of poverty. She, uh, there was a lot of prejudice against her. You know, she was going to into the news media. They told her she was too overweight. They said her color was too dark. She had all these verbal messages and not feeling good enough, but her mindset was so focused on wanting to succeed. And she had a regimented plan and she was focused <laughs> to the point of really succeeding. So it can be one way or the other when it comes to business. The mindset for success, if you have that in place, can really accelerate you. Um, another beautiful biography is Quincy Jones. You know, very much excelled in the music industry and film and mentored a lot of young people to their success in those areas as well. And at the end of the biography, they give all his awards and his acclaims. And they said, is there any areas that you failed in? He goes, yeah, I failed in love. You know, so he couldn't hold on to his relationships and his relationships with his children suffered most of his adult life until as he got older, he was able to you know, patch that up. But um, very interesting. I watch a lot of biographies to see how the childhood traumas impacted them in good and bad ways. I mean, let's face it, we have a very high ranking official in politics, so I will not say the name. And he has a lot of what we call blurting out. Okay. Blurting out is saying totally inappropriate things and just leaves people saying, he said what? Right. And blurting out is a sign of childhood trauma. He had an alcoholic father who was quite a business tyrant. Um, his biography was saying he was not able to play with kids on the weekends. He was, you know, cleaning toilets of his father's um, apartment buildings, you know. And so, you know, the, how people end up, I remember seeing a news report and saying, do you think he has mental health issues? I'm like, no, he has unhealed childhood trauma. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's very clearly evident to me what it is. Um, and this can also, you know, bring on narcissism. Um, and again, the sociopath, people who don't apologize, um, people who are ruthless in business. What does that show? American scandals or something where they talk about all the business people that have ripped other people off. That's a sociopath, right? Using someone for pleasure or profit. So unfortunately, when I was doing my research, I said one in 25 people were sociopathic. Now today they're saying like six and seven out of 25 are wow. sociopathic. Yeah. Because the That's traumas are worse and the families are falling apart, you know, so. Not um, of a surprise, to be honest, it's, but it is sad at the same time. Um, yeah. To know that. And thankfully, uh, we have someone like you. That oh. You know, all of you. those that are watching this now can look, uh, you may not find that you want or need her services, but you might, I'm sure you can think of somebody who might be in that camp and you could very gracefully uh, introduce them. And I'm sure Rihanna could help you with that. I have a lot of people, Brian, very successful in business, but struggle in love and they can't figure out why. So mm. that was the one that said, okay, I don't hear compliments at home. So I'm going to work so hard and get all A's or some B's and I'll get love from my teachers mm. and at least I'll be smart, you know? And then if they got, went home with a good report card, they feel a little love and gets finally a compliment from their mom or dad, but then they'd end up working very hard and ended up being very successful in business. But the underlying thing, let's say they had a father who was uh, very author authoritarian, very strict, who used to beat them um, or scream at them, you know, that was then still not healed, right? So when it came to love, chemistry is one of the worst ways to fall in love. It's funny, all these dating profiles, men say, must have chemistry, and that's all they go on. And really, I describe chemistry as the icing on the cake. Without the cake, the icing just melts. It's gone, right? You need the substance. What is their character? What is their value system? Um, what is their behavioral patterns? Can you trust them? Are they good with money? Are they responsible? Are they a good parent? You know, who are they as a person? This is what women really care about. The chemistry is just, you know, presute. It's, it's icing on the cake. Um, so building that integrity piece you know, who are you as a person? That's the most important thing. 
Um, so, you know, a woman, I see a lot of women that are people pleasers. Where does that come from? That comes from, uh, let's say a woman had an alcoholic, difficult mother. And in the morning she would get up to get her siblings ready for school, pack the lunches, get them dressed, get them out to the bus. And then she might not A, get yelled at and B, just here, thanks, hon, and get a little bit of love. So this is someone always overdoing to either keep peace in the house or keep peace for themselves. That was their coping mechanism. Then as a woman, this might be someone that comes in in a coupled relationship and I hear I've totally lost myself. I do everything for my husband and my kids and nothing's done for me. And uh, they're burned out, they're exhausted, they're stressed out, they feel disrespected and unloved. And so we have to rework on that boundary. Um, it's funny, somebody with a lot of humor. I did a study on comedians. Well, comedians used humor to get popular at school. They might have had trouble at home. So they came in and they told jokes. They were the class clowns. So they became popular by using humor. And a lot of comedians tell about their, their sad stories as kids and make humor out of it. But every comedian I did a study on, you know, came from a very traumatic household or a troubled childhood. Those That's interesting. Yeah. So there's all kinds of ways. I put together like 24 different patterns. Um, you know, someone that's a charmer, a manipulator, let's say a man that's someone like that. Well, that could have been the kid that let's say he, he would be beat by the father, got an F on the test and he's there. Oh, if I change it to an A to get it signed, you know, maybe I'll get away with it. And he finds if he lies, he gets away with things. Mm -hmm. So this establishes the power you know, the pattern of lying is easier than telling the truth, right? Uh, where's passive aggressive come from, you know, of a guy that shuts down and doesn't want to talk about things. Well, if he talked up as a child, he might've gotten whacked, you know, or screamed at. So he just learned, I better be quiet and not say a thing uh, to stay safe, right? These are all safety mechanisms. Um, so the manipulator, you know, he would go into school and schmooze his female teacher to get his D into a C, you know, do little chores for her and found, wow, you know, if I schmooze my teacher, this works, I can get better grades, you know? So all these little patterns are coping patterns that become normalized and then come out in adult relationships at work, at home, in dating, you know, so. Makes total sense. I am so, uh like leaning in, I just looked up at the camera. I was like, I got to back off a little bit because <laughs> I'm just like going closer and closer. Like, this is amazing. Um, it's so cool to be able to, number one, identify what is causing certain behaviors. And then on the flip side, which we really haven't got into, is now the result of dealing with that and cleaning out that the weeds from the garden, I like to say. Yeah. Um, and along those lines, uh, what, what I've been thinking as you're talking, like what – what a business that you have. Amazing. Uh, you went from therapy into coaching mm -hmm. uh, and then you've made a success at it. And you've only been at that for a couple of years, a little over two years, right? Uh, yeah. Well, I, I started coaching actually 2009 and 10 by going to RCI, Relationship Coaching Institute, and uh, got certified for singles and for couples. And then I really wanted an excellent educational program. I'm all about education. So I said, I have to write some books from my research. So live beyond your dreams from fear and doubt to personal power, purpose, and success. That's about the mindset for success. And then I wrote the book that's over 400 pages that went on to be the number one bestseller, Love Beyond Your Dreams, Break Free of Toxic Relationships to Have the Love You Deserve. So they're sister books are meant to go together. And then I wrote a 150 page workbook, one for singles and one for couples. So by the time that was all done, uh, I was ready then to officially coach, although I was coaching people in New Jersey where I lived at my company therapy by the sea. I was never the typical psychotherapist. I was always more of a motivational mindset coach. So I knew I wanted to do coaching from day one, but I had, I wanted to be certified in it. And I wanted to do it right. So by the time my materials were all written, I had moved down here to Florida and said, instead of like reestablishing myself in Delray, I'm going to go global, you know? And then I signed on a business coach and was with her for a year to learn the systems I didn't know. 
And uh, she was a great help. Lisa Sachevich was my coach for that. And then I took on JLD, John Lee Dumas, for my podcast coach, and he's fabulous. So, you know, I always take on a good mentor coach when there's something I don't know, especially around systems and, and higher tech marketing because I'm more old school, you know, I did a lot of marketing in my model and talent school before there were computers. So, um, you know, I needed to learn a lot of those things. So hired on the coaches to help me with that. I and think then that's, I, that's I went a- full time 2017 and closed the therapy door and said, that's it for therapy. And there you talk about liberation, huh? Yes, <laughs> totally. <laughs> totally. I work from home. I work the hours I want. I travel when I want, you know, and it's, it's fabulous. It's freedom yet still working and, and delivering my purpose in the world. Yeah, entrepreneur dream. Um, yeah. And I love, uh, so there's messages that you're sending out to our viewers that are amazing. Uh, I want to kind of highlight the fact that, look, this is an amazingly successful woman. Uh, who coaches other individuals and to become the best she could be, she herself hired coaches. That is a huge uh, thing to bring up and make sure that everyone is aware of. Look, the best in the world, uh, one of the most often that people go to is like Michael Jordan. Uh, He wouldn't be, he wouldn't have gotten to where he got without the amazing expert coaches that he got. He's not an expert or wasn't an expert in every facet of, of the sport of basketball. And uh, just as uh, Rihanna is not, nor am I, an expert in every facet of growing a business. Uh, mm-hmm. You just you need help from those who know how to do it. And that's why I love that you have said that publicly, Rihanna, that you've brought in coaches. Oh, uh, yes. And not just one. <laughs> you no, just- I had a publishing coach as well because I wanted my books in Barnes & Noble stores. And I was very determined. I remember sitting in the class, everyone, well, what's your goal for your book? Just to establish yourself as an expert. And they came to me, I said, I want my books in the Barnes and Noble stores. And they all started laughing. And the coach says, well, the reality is only half of 1% self-published people get in there. And I said, well, there's room for me. Half of 1%, those numbers are good enough for me. (laughs) And I'm in there. I did everything I needed to know step by step. And, you know, that was a big day for me. That was one of my childhood dreams to be in that bookstore. So I was thrilled. And so another beautiful pattern to follow. I love to tell uh, people that they have they have the, um, they have our permission to model or copy <laughs> to model success. And yeah. I love that you just said, yeah, but I'm going to be there. Mm-hmm. I mean, who wants to work with somebody like Rihanna? That is like that, that <laughs> you know, whatever you say, that's fine. But I'm, I'm just here to tell you, I'm going to make it there. And now yeah. you have a coach like that who has that kind of positive attitude. Who's a go-getter. Who's going to make sure you get the results you want and deserve. She's the one to go to. There's no I'm doubt. very particular. Yes. I have done a lot of business coaching. I do primarily 50% life and 50% love, but under the life portion is happiness in career. So if they're not happy, we have to brainstorm. What do they want to do? What area do they want to do it in? You know, if someone says, Oh, I want to be a coach too. That's great. But let me tell you the realities. Once you've got the realities, do you still want to be a coach? Cause there's a lot of work behind it. You know, uh, some of us make it look simple, but it's not, it's hours and hours of work and establishing your niche and being different than anybody else. You know, I learned from a a mentor early on, I was a promotional model at WFIL radio in Philadelphia. And I worked all over the city and with a lot of entertainers. That's one of my favorite stories, uh, dancing the entire encore with Freddie Mercury of Queen for the night of the opera concert at Tower Theater and having the tramps at my house in Philadelphia partying with them. So it was a cool life for a teenager. But I learned from my boss, Gene, he says, "Hun, you got to be different than everybody else. What's going to make you different? What's going to make you stand out? And anything you do in life and business, what's going to make you different? And I always remember that. You know, and um, whatever business I had, you know, when I was going to open a model and talent business in Erie, PA, everyone's there like, well, that's not going to go here. This is a blue collar town. I said, I don't know what kind of town it is. It's not Philly. I get it. I'm from Philadelphia. But I opened up Rihanna's Real People Modeling. So anyone could do it. I had age five to 85. My oldest model, Hildy, modeled a lot. <laughs> she, she was making a ton of money. And her husband was actually mad. She signed up for modeling school and then she got billboards and brochures for senior banking and senior health services. And she was, she was going to town. So that's how I opened it up. And it it was different, you know, and uh, I was 26 years old when I opened up with my first month's rent 
coming out of a difficult marriage uh, that there was a bankruptcy due to his business decisions. And uh, all I had was my first month's rent, not the ability to get a loan. So, you know, I had what my father taught me. He says, "Hun, if you got the five D's in life, you can do anything. Since then, I've added two more to my dad's story. But the first one I added was decide. Decide what you want. With decision is a really important part of what you wanna do. It has to be a firm decision. Then the five that my dad said was determination, desire, dedication, devotion, which is a spiritual part, and dare to dream. Then the last one I added was drive. And you need the drive when it gets tough. And when I was working those 12, 14 hour days, seven days in a row, building my online school platform, that was not easy, especially because I'm not a tech oriented person. I'm emotionally oriented. So it really took me a long time and you have to stay focused. It's like writing a 400 page book. You know, you have to stay focused to the task. And, um, you know, but the seven D's always was my little driving force that always kept me in the game, even when it got a little tough. I love those. The seven D's, <laughs> yes. determination, desire, dedication, devotion, dare to dream and drive. I love drive. Yes. I have the drive. There is no doubt. <laughs> I wanted to ask you something that uh, I love. It's a, another curiosity thing. Sure. Uh, especially in the type of business you have, it makes me curious with each guest that come on is, you know, the number one, um, the most, one of the most important skill sets one can acquire for their own business is in that realm of marketing. Because if, if you're not marketing, you don't have a business really. Yes. <laughs> you have to market, you have to market successfully. And I'm curious. So you've started officially a couple of years ago, even though you had been coaching prior to that. Um, how do you Rihanna today, go about marketing your current business? And what has been, what would you say, your most successful form of marketing your business to date? Yeah, I found early on that I was so excited about my message and it was so interesting and different that when I went on podcasts, people are like, oh my gosh, I love this. And then I was asked on summits, relationship summits, dating summits, couples. I did a men's summit this week, you know, parenting. So all different kinds of summits I'm on as, you know, one of 25 or one of 30 experts. And I'm usually, at, you know, on day two. So I'm pretty prominent that, you know, I'm seen there so, and being a guest on podcasts. So that started very early um, in my coaching career. And I love doing it because I love educating. Uh, I kind of have that way about me when I had my model and talent school, I was educating them what it took to have their dream of being models, actors, singers, dancers, and they actually did very well in my school. So I'm, I'm more of that teaching mode and that's where I think I'm most comfortable and where I really shine in educating about this topic. Uh, and that's, that's my biggest marketing tool right there. People hear the message and they're like, oh my gosh, yes, I have codependent relationship. Yes, I'm love addicted. That comes from a, um, abandonment. Okay, this is making sense. You know, So I have jealousy, I have control. That comes from trauma number seven, not feeling good enough. I get it now. So just putting the pieces together of where they've struggled or they have a partner that's struggled. And now they have some answers and then we just start going deep and then we heal it. So um, I would say that the best marketing tool I have is my speaking uh, podcasts and summits appearances. And so uh, for a couple more questions, if I may, on that realm. So podcasts, meaning your own podcast or appearing as guests on others or both? I'd say both. Okay. And then mm -hmm. for both, how do you, how do you, and I'm asking this on behalf of everyone else watching and listening. Sure. And, how do you get the word out that you're available and interesting enough to be on their podcast? What, what kind of uh, hurdles did you jump over to make that happen? Um, I started out with um, Interview Valet, oh. Tom Schwab's company, where, um, and I'm an affiliate for him now and know him very well because I wanted him to be my agent. See, that's a, a, a 
a setup I'm used to. I used to be a talent agent, right? So it's like, I'll give you 20%. Just find me the gigs, you know, <laughs> find me the, the interviews. So I started out with him and I think there was 20 interviews that I did. And that really got me um, my message honed in with Lisa. I got my message really down tight. Mm -hmm. um, they made me a beautiful one sheet, they call it, for a speaker. Gotcha. Um, and then from there, I went on to podcast guests where I'm also an affiliate and Mark Schwab has a list too, uh, finding, uh, people looking for guests as well as we can put our own podcast on there if we want guests. So between those two lists and getting a really strong start, uh, with Tom's company, um, I, I feel really good about that whole journey. And now I'm interviewing about five times a week. Fantastic. So, yeah. Podcast. Yeah. Guests, that's one of my go-tos. I love that. And yeah. I don't, re I don't remember, but you might've come through that, uh, on and come into this, uh, onto the show. Could have. Yes. And then when someone hears me in a summit, I get a ton of referrals. I saw you in so-and-so summits. Yeah. I love your message. I want you in my summit. That happens to me all the time. Mm -hmm. So how that's it, how I get the summit invitations. They just hear of me out there now. How, how did it start? I mean, the first summit that you were invited to, where did they hear hear about you, if you can remember? It's really hard to say. I guess it started back in 2015 when I was really starting to coach gotcha. a lot as I was building my last notebook. Um, but the speeches started to come in. I, so I don't know. I've always had a website since 2008. You know, and I've always written articles. I have an app. It's called Lessons in Life and Love on the go. But I was one of the first coaches to have an app out like in 2010. So, you know, I've been out there kind of globally, even wow. though I haven't been officially full time coach. I've been building up all those little systems. Yeah. Um, so my app is out there and I've had Facebook pages and I've written for eHarmony and Your Tango. So people know me from my articles. Um, I've had a lot of news appearances. So it's, it's varied. I'm, I'm really not sure. I mean, I do speaking gigs too. I was at a heating and air conditioning corporation last month. You know, it's like, how'd you hear about me? Oh, I Google searched you and I saw your website. And I want you to come about the mindset for success. Wow. Even though I'm a life and love coach and, you know, the CEO is sitting there and says, this is the best speech we've ever had here. This is phenomenal. You know, what you taught reaches all of us. I was talking about employee relationships and how the tight correlation is if you're not happy at home, it's going to come into your workplace. If you're not happy at work, it's going to hurt your marriage at home. And they're so tightly correlated. So, you know, if you're seeing certain patterns in people, there's certain ways you can handle them or handle it. It's like adult bullying sometimes, you know, and how do you handle that? So I love that, you know, here's what it comes down to. And people and you said it beautifully about basically how you go about marketing is you show up and you continue to do so on Correct. all different platforms. You can uh, either get invited to or that you create on your own as well, like the podcast uh, where you've done both. Uh, and that's one thing I loved. I've been preaching that for a long time is just show up, you know, yes. create a show similar to what you're watching right now would be one uh, way to, to create your own stage. And now you aren't waiting for people to invite you. you, you think <laughs> I like, love the convenience yeah. of staying at home and speaking. Yes. It's the best. You know? <laughs> yeah. and it's like, this is great. I can still work and not be on the road all the time. Yes. It'd be great to do live stages as well, a little bit yeah. more often, cool. but this is now that I'm up to five speeches a week or appearances, this is really convenient for me to be able to do this from home. Yeah. And I used to speak from stage quite a bit myself. And I, when I, we were talking offline before the show started, when I did my business transition, I basically put a halt to that because mm -hmm. I know how much work that is. And I would put on my own events at the end. I was like, wow, what a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And yeah. Then, uh, and everything that goes into it. And so this was my kind of band aid fix because I love being on the stage. Uh, just I'm gravitated toward it. I don't know why I just enjoy it. And, yeah. uh, it's so much fun to help and serve others and watch their reaction live from stage and all that. Uh, it's just so awesome. But this is kind of a, a Band-Aid fix until I get back out there and on the stage. 
Uh, well, to me, it was about getting my message out there. What's the best and fastest way I can help people have emotionally healthy, evolved and conscious love. That's my mission. How can I teach them? If you're struggling, there's a reason for it. And the most important thing is it can be fixed. It can be healed and it can be fixed and those toxic patterns can stop. So that was my mission. And I wish I had that education when I went through that and I had nobody to turn to. So that's what drives me. So however I can get my message out there the fastest and most efficiently, I'm all about that. Yeah. And it's, you know, we have such similar paths in that way. And there are so many things that I wish, you know, I'd say, I wish I'd learned that sooner. The, the cool thing is looking back is, well, would I, would, would I have had the life experiences that I needed to be where I am today had that happened earlier? Right. Yeah. We're in, we're in a state of struggle more when we don't realize there are things to help us. That could actually be a benefit once you found the solution and now you can go on uh, with much greater confidence and get greater results for people. So I love, I just love how life has worked. Uh, I'm 55 years old myself and I feel like I've just begun and it's invigorating. I look at other you you know, friends from the corporate world who are just, all they can't wait for is retirement so they can go swing on a hammock and sip on a drink until they die. I, I don't get that, but that's, yeah. That's the way I'm I wired. <laughs> well, Hey, uh, Rihanna, we are coming near the end and I know it's very late there in uh, Florida compared to here. Um, I, there's one question I love to ask every guest expert that comes on, comes onto the show. And it's, it's usually very telling. It's, um, it's kind of a, it's just, it's a magnificent question because the question itself isn't the magnificent thing. It's the answers that come back. And I've asked every guest expert the same exact question. Uh, and that's the way I like to close out the show because it's very thought provoking at times. It can be. Um, but before I do that, I promised everyone real quick uh, that I would show them a way that they could win that five night stay yeah. at a five star luxury resort in Mexico. And it's real simple to do so. I know you've been taking great notes, all of you. Fantastic. Good job. Now it's time to pull out your phone. You have my permission to grab your phone and text this message that you see on the screen. So what you want to do is you want to punch in the phone number of 661-535-1624. And then down where you type in the little messages, if you're going to text it off to someone, type in the word PEAK. That's P-E-A-K and do that right now and we will choose a winner. You will be notified by, you guessed it, text message. This very system is run by powertexting.com, our sponsors. So how appropriate is that to give away the vacation they're sponsoring using their system? So go ahead and, and text the word PEAK to 661-535-1624. And now back to the woman of the hour with that <laughs> wonderful heavy hitting, it is not heavy hitting. And so there's a little build up to it, but I just want you to know, uh, Rihanna, the cool thing about this question is there is no such thing as a wrong answer. Okay. It doesn't exist. Give in it fact, to me, Brian. What is it? <laughs> the opposite is actually the truth. And that is the only correct answer is what you come up with, what your answer is. So okay. now that just, I know that you're not worried about it anyway, being a mindset <laughs> professional, uh, but you know, now you can just be free to to just say what comes to your mind. It could be immediate. It may take some time. Either way is fine. Okay. Sound cool? Yes. All right. Here we go. The so, <laughs> <laughs> Rihanna Milne, how do you define success? Hmm. I would simply say it's feeling proud of the work that I've done over the years, the combination. And I always put this first of being a mother. I absolutely adore my children and I'm a grandma now, uh, a mentor, a teacher, a coach, a therapist, um, a manager, a talent agent and manager, helping people to achieve their dreams to feel their happiest, best evolved and conscious self. If I'm doing that, that is my definition of success. I love it. I was taking <laughs> notes like a madman. Just so folks uh, can see this, I'm going to zoom in on this and show them. I'm running this show. I'm talking, <laughs> and That's I'm pretty running, good. You got a lot of notes there. <laughs> all from tonight. 
I kid you not, you can take a screenshot of that and prove me, prove that that is the case. <laughs> um, and I love, I love what I get to do. And I love that your answer is, you know, true to form is different than everyone prior to you. That's what's really intriguing about that question. Uh, Rihanna is that no two people have answered that identically. Mm -hmm. uh, some are similar, but I know it's going to happen at some some point. It has to. Uh, but really, when it came down to it, when we peel away the onion, you actually said it, helping uh, people to achieve uh, what they want, you know, to. Yeah. Your, and it's all about, and goals. it wasn't about helping Rihanna to make $10 million or had nothing to do with money. I didn't hear a word money in there, which is mm -hmm. also very interesting because my prior guest, the same is true. Isn't that cool? Because successful people aren't thinking about money. That's they're not of a scarcity mindset. They're thinking of, you know, I I want to make more money so I can serve more people. The end of the game is to help people because the money comes. It's there right. as a result of doing that. And so the beautiful thing is the target, you know, the big shiny object is not money, it's helping others. And you're no different uh in that way. You are very different and unique and special, of course. Uh, and I appreciate you. And now you have something as well, I understand, that you would like to share with our audience, a little sure. giveaway of your own. Um, I come bearing website. gifts. Yes, I do. <laughs> what website well, would be good to pull up to show while you're uh, describing that? Okay. For what anyone that would like more information on the childhood trauma uh, piece of this tonight, I have a free ebook. It's at havetheloveyoudeserve.com have the love you deserve .com. And if you go to my website, which is my name, Rihanna Milne.com, you'll see the free love test. There's four tests back there. One is a childhood trauma checklist. There's uh, one, another test for singles and another one for couples. So go ahead. You see it right up there in the corner, take my love test. And if you scroll down, you will see the links to my app as well as you will get free book chapter downloads of both live and love beyond your dreams. I love this, Brian. You keep scrolling scroll down. There's a lot on there. But yeah, it's um, the books are on there and you get like 50 to 60 pages of each live and love beyond your dreams. There they are. So you can do that opt in as well. Of course, my podcast is free. I'm up to 62 shows. I, I usually launch at every Thursday or Friday. Um, so, you know, do listen to that. I go into things about life, love, business, parenting, the mindset for success and healing any past trauma. That's all about my app. You can get the app there. There's all kinds of goodies on there. Thank there. you. This is the best way to do it. I've never had anyone do that for me. Thank you so much. You're very well. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. And it's a, I have to tell you, it is a gorgeous website. It's beautiful and functional. It covers all the aspects it's very uh, appealing to the eye. It's great. It's great eye candy factor. And there's, like you said, there's so much to it. It's a, uh, and that's in a, in a good way. And you're, you're an amazing woman. I'm glad that you are achieving the level of success you are today. And I look forward to helping you achieve even greater success in any way. Thank possible. You, Brian. Let's not lose uh, touch of each other. Um, and I appreciate you so much for coming on and spending this hour with myself and all of our wonderful adoring fans. <laughs> and uh, I just want to encourage the listeners to don't wait. I mean, now is the time really to create that life you really desire and to have the love you deserve. Life's too short to settle for less. So definitely reach out to Rihanna and connect with her. Um, she actually, uh, well, what's the best way for the uh, folks to connect with you that uh, gets to you quickest? Right through the website. Uh, okay. Both websites, there's a podcast website, both have contact me. So uh, that's the best way. Or Perfect. Rihanna Milne at Gmail. There, well, that makes it pretty simple, doesn't it? Right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, Rihanna, thank you once again so much for coming on the show. I appreciate you beyond words. Thank for you. For all of you that have been watching uh, live or even listening as a recording or watching as a recording, we appreciate you as well. Uh, and that's it for tonight. That is the Mind Body Business Show. We will see you again next week right here uh, for the next edition. Until <laughs> then. Have a great, great evening and be blessed. So long for now. Bye. Thank you for watching and listening. This has been the Mind Body Business Show with Brian Kelly.